Good evening everybody. So yesterday we talked about how to plant managu, the seeds, the types of managu that we can grow and the materials that we require. If you didn't watch that video, you can check it up in this link up here. Today we are going to talk about the seedbed preparation. Firstly, you need to select a good location for your seedbed. Do not set up your seedbed in a corner where nothing else grows. Give your plants the best spots so that you can give them a good start, which will guarantee quality crops throughout the grow season. The best location should have enough light. It should not be exposed to harsh weeds. It should be slightly shadowed, free from perennial weeds. Remove all the weeds and anything that might hinder the seeds from germinating effectively. Properly till the land until the soil is well fine such that there are no compacted soil that will prevent the water or air from getting in and out such that the plant is going to get enough oxygen for maximum germination. To add manure at the ratio of 1 is to 1, that is if you are going to use a bucket, you add one bucket of soil and then you mix it with a bucket of manure. If you are going to be using a wheelbarrow, you do the same, a pot or any other growing medium depending on the amount of seeds that you want to plant. Before before planting, you mix the seeds with sand or wood ash. This is going to encourage uniform growth. Alternatively, you can also soak the seeds for 24 hours in warm water or for 12 hours. This will also increase the rate of germination. A seedbed requires you to water regularly so that you can increase the rate of germination. So for you to increase the rate of water retention, you mix your soil with organic matter, add manure, cow manure, it will also be a good medium. After that, you drill rows which are going to be 30 centimeters apart and you're going to plant the seeds at a rate of uh, 15 centimeters apart. If you're going to be planting the seed at a more congested way, they are going to be competing for nutrients and it is not going to be ideal for the growth of the seeds. You cover this area with a thin layer of soil because remember the managu seeds are very tiny and you want to encourage growth so you cover with a thin layer of soil. After that you can erect an agronet or an agro shed which is going to provide a shade in the area to reduce the sun rays from affecting your seed. If you do not have an agronet you can also put grass which is going to also act as mulch. Additionally, the grass is also going to prevent the seed from splattering around when it rains or even during the irrigation process. The germination is going to take place after 7 to 14 days. After 3 weeks, you remove the shade or the agronet uh, slightly and you reduce the water application rate. You remove the shade completely in the fourth week to be exposed to the sunlight or to the external environment completely and it is also going to harden it for it to start to withstand the transplant shock plants experience once they are transplanted. To transplant the seedlings when they have five true leaves only if it is raining and only if you have sufficient water for irrigation but if you do not have have enough water and it is not raining just wait for the plant to acquire a strong stem so that they can be able to withstand the sunshine while the seeds germinate in the seed bed prepare your land by adding manure ensuring that the soil is well tilled and it is not compacted so that when you plant your seedlings they are going to thrive the fertilizer that you require during the plant planting period are nitrogen which can be gotten from organic matter. So if you mix your soil well with manure, it is going to be sorted. You can also add phosphorus to encourage root development. Nitrogen is very essential for encouraging the development of the leaves and phosphorus is very essential in encouraging the development of the roots. So for you to ensure that you have a proper and well balanced soil, make sure that you add organic matter and phosphorus fertilizers so that you can be able to encourage proper and a healthy managu throughout the grow season. The cost of production is highly dependent on the piece of land that you're going to plant your managus in, but in a 50 by 100 piece of land, you can use approximately 50,000 shillings. Whether you're going to be using 2,000 shillings for your fertilizer application every two weeks, 
and you're going to use uh, 1500 shillings for water depending on whether you're buying the water and the amount of prices in your place and also the number of employees that you're going to hire in your land and it is also going to depend on whether you're going to be leasing the land or not during the vegetative period the managus require moderate rainfall so if there is a lot of rainfall in your area it is going to be affected by leaf blight you can prevent that by spraying biological fungicides like regain on a weekly basis which will help to reduce the adverse effects the fungal infections cause to the managus inconsistent rains can affect the production rate such that when there are no rains, the production is going to reduce if you are going to depend on the rain totally. Lack of enough water for irrigation also delays the process of germination and even the process of the vegetative growth. So if you have the water, the better so that you can increase the rate of production. The prices of the managus tend to go down during the rainy season such that if you are selling them at 40 shillings during the dry season, we will be selling them at 10 shillings during the rainy season. Managus take 3 to 4 weeks to mature and you will be harvesting them for 8 weeks or more depending on how you're going to take care of them. You harvest the young shoots and the leaves when the plant is 15 centimeters above the ground. Timely harvesting encourages new shoots to develop and it is technically like pruning old ones for new ones to develop which is going to help the managu to keep producing new leaves every other two weeks. And you're going to add more manure so that the managus are going to be greeny and having the right quality for market. You harvest the vegetables early in the morning or late in the evening when the sun is, goes down so that you can maintain its quality. And if you can take it to the market the following day, the better so that you can increase the chances of finding a good customer because of good quality. Well and properly managed managus can be harvested up to eight weeks and in an acre piece of land you're going to be harvesting 3500 kilograms which is about four to eight tons so like i keep telling you the best way to get a good produce out of agricultural farming is having a lot of numbers so the more numbers you have the more money you're going to make and even if you're going to be making uh, or selling at a loss it is also going to be a substantial amount that is going to keep you in the market because I will not guarantee you that it is going to be bed of roses all the time. Thank you so much for watching and in the next video we shall reflect on the managu market, the prices that we sell the managus at and we will be answering the question of whether managu business is a farming, is a profitable farming venture. So make sure to tune in tomorrow for that video and do not forget to subscribe if you haven't already those who have already subscribed thank you so much share with friends so that they can also learn this uh, beautiful venture that we can do in our environment home garden urban farming until next time thank you guys for watching bye bye